In this video, we're going to be building on something that we worked on in the last video. In the last video, we translated words into equations and then solved them. We're going to do the same kind of thing in this video, but in this example, we're going to be translating real life examples, what I just ter term the real. We're going to turn the real into an equation, and then we may or may not solve it. Uh, we kind of did this a little bit with the uh, ages question in one of the previous videos. At, well, not ages, it was, um, I don't remember, it was Ali, Ben, and Carla, or something like that. Um, and we did a little bit there, but we're going to see three more examples here. And these are generally going to be harder than the ones that we saw in the previous question. So this one's an exception. This one's a number one. It's an easy. So let's check this out. If notebooks cost $2 each and backpacks cost $32 each, which of the following represents the cost in dollars of N notebooks and B backpacks? Well, again, instead of trying to match it up, let's just write the equation ourselves. Well, we know that a notebook costs $2 and there's N of them. So it's going to be the total cost will be two times N. And we know the backpacks are going to cost $32 each. So we're going to say it's 32 times B. And they get the total cost, we just add them together. So we're looking for 2n plus 32b. No, 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 yes, no. So the best choice here is d. So start off with a relatively easy one. But now we're going to go into our first hard question, number 17. Uh, last third of the section, so one of the hard ones. So let's really take our time and be careful with this one. The city library donated some children's books to Mr. Clark's first grade class. If each student takes four books, there will be 20 books left. If three students do not take a book and the rest of the students take five books each, there will be no books left. How many books were do donated to the class? Okay, so we circle the, what we need. We need how many books? Notice this is one of those questions. It's a hard, but if you try to digest it in one gulp, you're going to choke on it because this is a lot of information here. We need to break this up. So let's figure this out. Let's figure the sentence out piece by piece. Now, you might think it could be useful to... Um, plug in your answers, test your answer choices. Um, and you can kind of do it, but it's ugly because the issue is not only do we not know how many books are there are, like we, that's what we're trying to figure out, but we don't know how many students there are in this class. So it makes it a little bit rough to do it that way. So I'm not going to show you that way. I don't really think it's very effective. I, I've tried it and it's just, it's more trouble than it's worth. So let's just translate this into a couple of equations and solve. In this case, and I believe in the one after, we're going to be writing two equations here and then doing something with them to figure out what we need. So let's do that. The city library donated some books to the first grade class. Okay. If each student takes four books, there will be 20 books left. So let's call S the number of students. So we know that if each student takes four, uh, there'll be 20 left. So let's actually go back. Let's call T the total number of books. And this is what we're looking for, right? We're trying to solve for T. So we know that T is going to equal, well, the total number of books, it's going to be t four times the number of students, right? Because each student takes four books. So the number of books they're taking is 4S. And when they do that, there's 20 books left over. So we can say there's another 20 books here. And the sum of the number of books the students take and the 20 left over should equal our T. So that's our first equation. If three students do not take a book and the rest of the students take five books each, there will be no books left. Okay, so in this case, the total number of books is going to equal, well, what? Well, we know each student, except for three, are taking five. So it's going to be five times something. But what are we going to do for the next part? Well, notice it's three less students. So it's going to be S minus three, right? Because we're not, we don't want to do five S because five S would be if every student took it. We want to do five times S minus three because it's three fewer students um, than there are in the class that are taking books. And we know that this is going to leave none left over, so we don't have to add any plus 20 like we did in the first problem. So now we have two equations, uh, two unknowns, so we can go ahead and solve this the whichever way you like. I think it's easy in this case, since we've got t equals and t equals, let's just set them equal and go from there. So we're gonna get 4s plus 20 is equal to 5s minus 15. Uh, do a little rearranging. We're going to get S equals 35 when you rearrange that. So the number of students equals 35. Okay. Uh, that's not what we want. We want the number of books. So we can just plug this in to say this top one here. 4 times 35 is 140. And 140 plus 20 is 160. So the answer to this one is C. Now, a um, couple things. Remember we talked about the 30 second solution. This one is one of those exceptions where there is a decent amount of computation. So I, I didn't say that every problem 
has not much computation. Most don't. Here's an example where we do actually have to do a little bit of legwork to get to the answer. And this one is not really doable, I don't think, at least in 30 seconds. It takes take a little bit a uh, while to figure out how to get how to get it done and then actually do the math to solve it. Um, again, plugging in, I just don't really see it being too useful. Um, I mean, I guess in theory you could plug 160 in for T and 140 in for T and then solve it. You still have to create the equations that way, so it's not super useful. Uh, if you can think of any shorter ways to do this problem, I'm sure there's got to be something out there. Uh, leave a comment below. Let's look at number 17. Another hard. This one, though, is a hard grid in. Tom and Allison are both salespeople. Tom's weekly compensation consists of $300 plus 20% of his sales. Allison's weekly compensation consists of $200 plus 25% of her sales. If they both have the same amount of sales and the same compensation for a particular week, what was that compensation in dollars? So we want to get their compensation. All right, again, another long problem. Let's take it sentence by sentence. Tom and Allison are both salespeople. Okay. Tom's weekly compensation consists of $300. So his compensation, which we'll call C. So C is compensation is $300 plus 20% of his sales. So for the sales, we'll just call that S. So his compensation is $300 plus 0 0.20 times S. Notice we're changing that percent into a decimal just to make it fit in the equation. All right, so that is for Tom. Allison's weekly compensation consists of $200 plus 25% of her sales. So C is, for her, is $200 plus 0.25 of S. If they both have the same amount of sales, so this is why I actually made S the same, because they have the same amount of sales, so we can just consider S is the same for both of them. And same thing with C, they had the same comp compensation for a particular week. What was the compensation? This is very similar to the last one. Notice we have two equations, two unknowns, and actually in both cases, they're both equal to C. So we want to solve for, we want to get C eventually, but let's get S first. Notice this is a very similar kind of problem. So we need to solve for S, then plug it back in to get C. So for this, you can solve it however you'd like. I'm just going to set them equal to each other. So we get 300 equals this. And I set them equal because they both equal C. So I can just do a substitution. So I'm going to do a little rearranging. I'm going to get 100 equals 0.05S. So you do the uh, division on that. You're going to get S is 2,000. Now don't grid 2,000 in because they don't want the sales. They want the compensation. So again, we're going to take this and plug it into either one. We'll plug it into this guy. So for Tom, it's going to be 300 plus 0.20 times 2,000, which is 300 plus, this is 400. Whoops, 400, not 4,000. And therefore, it's going to be equal to 700. So the answer to this one is 700. And you go ahead and grid that in. All right, so these were two here, two hard ones. Uh, not all of these translate the real into equation problems are going to be hard. These were just the ones that were available on the practice test that I've provided on the site. Um, so overall, you just translate them into equations, solve them if you need to. Sometimes, uh, like in both these, the computation may be a little bit long. We got two equations and two unknowns, but that's okay. Just keep chugging through and eventually you'll get the answer.